If you want to get a high return on spend for your campaigns, there are certain things that you have to avoid. Now in total there are 7 things, but I don't have time to go in all of them, so in this video I will tackle 3 things that are holding you back. So let's start with the first one, and this is by far the most important one. Now it will sound something like, oh Archie, like I get you, but getting it doesn't mean that you are applying it. And I am talking about the mindset. Mindset is one of the most important things if you want to get a high return on spend and if you want to succeed in this advertising and social media marketing space. So one thing that I can tell you is that advertising is not for every single person. Advertising is for tough people. It doesn't matter what kind of ads you are running on what kind of platform, advertising generally speaking is for tough people. Because there is no space for being too emotional or being attached to your products. And we human beings are emotional creators. We, in most of the cases, we operate based on emotions. Even if you are not self-aware of that. But I can tell you, in most of the cases, we operate based on emotions. So that's why I circle back to what I said, advertising is for tough people. You have to be very data-driven and look only and only at the analytics. What I noticed very frequently when I work with entrepreneurs, with business owners, with e-com owners, is that some of them, they are either too emotional on the advertising, on like the numbers, if the campaign is not working, they are going and they are changing like in just within a couple hours, or they are too attached to their product or to their like branding. They never think about it like something else, they never go and think outside of a box, let's say in this way. So they have this certain belief that their product is something unique, is something that they could sell it, doesn't matter like what is going on in the marketplace. But the reality is that in most cases, until we test that product, we will never know. Because I said in one of my videos, the marketplace is the best marketer out there. They will tell you how good is your product. If they are willing to take their hard-earned money and pay for your product, in that case, you could say that, yes, uh, my product is good and now I can scale it. But just being attached and just thinking that my product is going to sell very well without any data in place, that is a pretty like a bad problem in that case. And on top of it, we have to understand that great campaigns with great outcomes take a lot of time. There is no quick buck and there are no overnight successes. No one could wake up and have this successful campaign and no one is failing overnight. And this wrong mindset comes from a very bad programming or through watching these videos on YouTube where you see like how I generated $1 million in one month without doing anything or with just putting this ad and like doing nothing. In any kind of activities, it needs to be 80% mindset and 20% mechanics. Maybe you already heard about this because it's very common, but that is true because if the foundation is not good, which is your mindset, in that case, when you are like, let's say, laying these bricks one by one, what is gonna happen if the foundation is not good? Like the building simply is gonna fall. So that's why the mindset is so crucial. Now, after hearing this first thing, probably you'll think in your mind, oh, like Archie, like I, I got you, like I know how important is mindset. Well, if you know how important is that, just go and freaking apply it. Anyways, let's move on to the next thing that you have to avoid if you want to get the highest return on spend possible, and that is launching one ad creative once in a while. So let's understand what's the difference between launching one ad creative, let's say in one month, than launching five ad creatives in a week. And let's be very specific with one particular example. A question that we need to kind of think about is what is our usual success rate of our ad creatives? Let's say that in this case it's going to be 20%. So from five ads, one ad creative usually is performing and is generating a very good results and it can sustain a much higher ad spend. So with the first scenario, when you are launching one ad creative per month, that will take you five months until you get pretty like a decent creative that will sustain a much higher budget that is going to allow you to scale your ad account. Now on the other hand, if you're launching five ad creatives per week, that allows you to have one ad creative, one successful ad creative every single week. Now imagine how your results will look like, how your return on ad spend will look like, and how your overall 
revenue will be when you are launching five ad creatives considering that one ad creative is successful that's why i emphasize so much on launching as many creatives as possible now of course they have to be quality you have to know what you're doing with your creatives otherwise it doesn't matter how many creatives you're launching if they are all crappy in that case that is not gonna apply i can promise you that if you're launching so many creatives every single week consistently I don't know like what you should do wrong but you will simply get good at that because we know that in any kind of activities when we practice that much more we get better and better and better so over time even if your first creatives are not so good like if you keep doing that and you know that your product is good and your people want it you are gonna get good and your return on spend is gonna be much higher. This idea applies to everything, including this YouTube channel, because when I just got started, when I started first uh, recording these YouTube videos, I sucked, like I was very uncertain. If you don't trust me, just go back and watch my first YouTube videos. You will see how unconfident and how bad I was. Now, am I perfect right now? No, but did I improve myself from my first videos? You bet. And guess what? In one year from now, I will get even better. In five years from now, I will get even better and better and better. And this channel is not another channel that is gonna just be like for a couple months. This channel is gonna be for a long period of time. Like I'm talking about decades because I'm gonna improve myself over time and I'm gonna start talking about different aspects of marketing. Okay, now once you understand how we operate so far, Let's move to the next thing that you have to avoid if you want to get a high return on spend. And that is optimizing your ads based on this like kind of vanity metrics, like I'm talking about reach, impressions, things like that. High return on spend doesn't mean high amount of impressions or high amount of reach. Like if you run a brand awareness campaign in Facebook Ads Manager, will you get tons of impressions? Yes, but will you get a high return on spend? Uh, not really because that campaign objective is not engineered for getting you quality traffic to your website who is much more likely to convert. Now, time to time, we have to pay attention to these metrics like click-through rate, what is our cost per 1,000 impression, but how we optimize our ads is based on two metrics, which is cost per purchase and a very return on ad spend. And also you have to keep in mind that optimization, you have to make it on the ad level, not on the ad set level, but on the ad level. So this way the three things that you have to avoid if you want to get a high return on spend. Now, if you'd like to find out about the other four, let me know in the comments below. But if I see that there is not much engagement, in that case, that will make me think about one thing, that this is not something that you would be interested, so I will keep it secret. Now, on the other hand, if I see a couple comments asking for that content, I might reveal them to you. So, thanks for watching this video till the end, and thanks for supporting this channel, and we will keep in touch.